Now will you get an amount for every month? Let's say, you have hired me, I've joined your organization. Will you keep on getting the referral bonus every month after I join? No. One time, one time right. And let's say you have referred me, but I could not clear the interviews I could not get in. Will you still get a referral bonus? No. No, right, you will not get it. So what happened here? You are eligible for a referral bonus right. But it has some other conditions associated with it as well. The person you refer has to join, has to spend some time and then you get a one-time bonus, right? So you are eligible for it. But you cannot go back to your compensation team and say, Hey, I am eligible for a referral bonus. Why don't you pay to me every month? Does it work that way? Every month, you get a referral bonus. Unless you refer someone, unless that person gets selected, you don't get the money right. Performance bonus is also something like this. Performance bonus. How many times do you get a performance bonus in a year? Sometimes. Some companies have per quarter right. But still you don't get it every month. You get it at a fixed time. Like some companies, I know they do it per quarter. Most companies do it once a year, or twice a year. Either of these two. So can you go up and tell to your compensation partner that, yeah, I think my performance has been quite good. You have to pay me performance bonus every month. Does it work that way? No. No. And let's say the company did not do well. The company had a bad year. Will you still get a performance bonus? Like what happened in 2020? Didn't happen, right? Most companies decided not to give a performance bonus. Right, because the company itself did not do well. A lot of industries were severely hit. Like, let's say, the hospitality industry, the airlines, and the travel tourism industry. They were severely hit. So they said that we are not in a position to give you any performance bonus. It's okay, you have performed well, but we are not able to give you that extra performance bonus. But the employees were eligible for it. Correct. The employee might say that what did I do wrong? It was a global pandemic, so it was not my mistake. But they could not go and tell to their employers that we need a performance bonus, because the company decided not to give it. Right. So this may happen. You may be eligible for a compensation plan. It is assigned to your package, but you may not get an actual payment for it. So this is also possible. So yeah, this may happen. I mean, we have seen this in real life as well, but just we want to reiterate that when we learn about this topic as well. Right. Let's quickly look at the overall structure of how compensation looks. So the top level is compensation package. It is the all-inclusive component. We call it as the compensation package. Compensation package will have two main parts. One is the guidelines, one is the plans. Your guidelines will include your grades and grade profiles. Grade is the range of pay depending on various factors. Right. The most common grade of pay is depending on your job profile. 
That is a very, very common way to have some grades. Right. Let's say you are a manager. So manager would be between $50,000 to $100,000. Let's say. Right. That is your range of pay for a manager. Right, let's say you are an Indian employee. So let's say you are a senior consultant. Your range of pay is, let's say, 10 lakhs to 20 lakh rupees. Or maybe 10 lakhs to 25 lakh rupees a year. That is the range of pay. All the people who are senior consultants will be paid in between that range. So what do we call it? We call it a compensation grade. Right, we call it a compensation grade. And then we also have the grade profiles. We'll talk about grades and grade profiles either later today or tomorrow. But a grade profile is a localization of the range. So are all the employees in the organization paid the same, I mean paid within the same range across the world? Let's say a manager. You have managers in India. You have managers in the US. You have managers in UK. Right. All at the same level, I would say within the hierarchy. Will the pay range be the same in all these places? No, right, most likely it will be different. Now, even in the same country, even in the same country, sometimes based on the location, they have different ranges. Like maybe in Mumbai, where apparently the cost of living is higher than in some other parts of the country, maybe the pay range would be a bit different. Right. I remember when my mother used to work, she used to say that the house rent allowance for Mumbai was significantly higher than what it was for the rest of the country. And now, even nowadays we see, salaries in some cities are, on an average, a bit higher than what we see for the rest of the cities. Right. So you may have different ranges of pay based on different factors. Again, it's also very common to have different ranges of pay based on the departments. Right. Let's say, in the research and development team a manager might be getting a higher salary than the manager in the, let's say, the IT support department. Possible. Right. Maybe in the research and development team, everybody is a, let's say, PhD. Right. So they are very highly skilled. So for those people the pay range itself is different. And in an IT support or in an IT maintenance kind of. So the skill set is different. Although we are saying that both of them are managers, a manager of an IT, a manager in an R&D department, same organization. Right. Same company, maybe same location? But the range of pay may be different. Right. So we may have these kind of subranges. But what are these basically? The range of pay is nothing but a guideline. And what is the difference between a guideline versus a rule? Rules are rules, right. Rules are rules, meaning you have to abide by the rules. You cannot, I mean you cannot break the rules. Although people say rules are meant to be broken. But, let's go by the rules. Right, let's go by the book. We will not break the rules. 
Rules meaning we will not be able to do something else if it is defined as a rule. But if it is a guideline, if it's a guideline, it's a suggestion. It's a suggestion. Like the markings on the road. If it is a dotted white line, then that means it's a guideline. You may stay. I mean, you are advised to stay within that lane, but you may cross over to the other lane. You may cross over to the other lane, but if it's a solid white line, then it's a rule. You cannot write, you cannot cross over. It's a rule. Write. So you cannot cross over. So things like this. If a guideline means it is a suggestion. Right. So a pay grade. A pay grade will give you a range of pay. Let's say 10 locks to 25 locks. 10 locks to 25 locks is a range of pay. That is a guideline. Right. Now when I say it is a guideline. So can you hire a worker with a compensation of, let's say, 9 locks? The range being 10 to 25? Can you hire someone with 9 locks? No. Yes. Why not? It's a guideline. It's a guideline. It's a guideline. It's a guideline. You may hire somebody with nine locks. Right. So yeah, you thought, yeah, you got a deal. This person used to make or maybe it doesn't have a necessary prior experience, but you still thought this person to be good enough for hire. You hired, but you gave a lesser salary. Similarly, is it possible to hire somebody with a 30 locks compensation package? If in the 10 to 25 grade it is possible. It is uncommon. It is not encouraged, but it is technically possible. Right, technically, it is possible again, because the grades and grade profiles are guidelines. Got it. Okay. It's not common, by the way, that your compensation manager will say, hey, what's the use of having guidelines, and if you are going to deviate from that? They might not approve it, but it is technically possible to put in a value that is outside the range. Okay, then we have your plans. Plans are your allowance plans, your bonus plans, merit plans. Okay. So they are your plans. We call them as plans in Workday. They are the headings under which you get paid. Okay. They are the reasons, I mean, they are the different what to say, components under which an employee may get paid. And under plans we have something called as elements, compensation elements and compensation elements are the link to payroll. They are the actual headings under which you will get paid, or they are the components that will appear in your paycheck. Right. The payroll will take the input from compensation plans using compensation elements. That's the term that we use. That is the linkage between compensation and payroll.